I'm Nathan Gonzalez with Inside Elections. I'm here with Kelly Ward, Democratic Strategist and outgoing ex Executive Director of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. What's something you might have done differently, you know, as ED of the, of the committee? Sure. It's a good question. It's something I've thought a lot about. And I think as the ED and just also as Democrats, part of what we really needed to do was to accept the reality that he could win. I think in some ways, someone in a, in a meeting used the phrase failure of imagination. And I I think that's a really good phrase. I think that's that's what it was. In some ways, we just didn't really accept that it was possible, mm -hmm. and didn't really let ourselves believe inter intuitively, internally, that it was something that could happen. And you know, decisions and behavior sort of fell from that. Do you think the committee misunderstood Trump or his appeal? And how would you rate the accuracy of the data that you were seeing throughout, throughout sure. the cycle? A campaign is about trying to meet voters where they are. And when you talk to voters in 2016, where they were and what they were thinking about was Donald Trump. That is a statement of fact that they, voters viewed this election through the lens of Donald Trump. And so what we were trying to do was to put the House races in that context, to help voters understand there's Donald Trump in the national election, and then there's how to, how to think about Congress and your House Republicans within that context. And I think that was the right strategy, because again, the races are nationalized, the, um, you know, the voters were thinking about the election through the lens of Donald Trump. District by district, we didn't talk about Donald Trump everywhere. We talked about Donald Trump in key races where that was the best district by district strategy for how to connect with voters and, and tell a message and provide a contrast with the House Republican. I think the the overall strategy of putting these races in a national context was right. Now, the thing that was different was Donald Trump won, right? Had Hillary Clinton won, I think we would have picked up a lot of seats, more so than we even did. Um, you know, she did win in the districts where, um, in some districts where we won, in some districts where we lost, but the notion of trying to fit the House race into a nationalized environment is right, and that is what we as a party, I think, need to be doing generally. The thing to know about campaigns and about house races that is very clear when you look back at the 2016 election is campaigns are always about a meta narrative right they're always about one big thing at the end of the day the election is about one major thing and in 2016 it was still about change it was an election about change and voters were willing to give even Donald Trump, someone who's so awful on so many levels, they were even willing to give him a pass because they want to change so badly. And that is the piece that I think we failed to really appreciate, um, that they were willing to you know, elect candidates who were unqualified in order to overcome the that to fit to you know meet that need for change. The second point to your question about data, data mm -hmm. is Ironically, there, you know, there's been a lot of coverage in the post-election about how the data was wrong, but when you look at the data, the signs are there. The data itself wasn't as off as it has been in previous cycles. It's just that we all, again, back to the failure of imagination, we failed to see it or we wrote it off as, you know, you can, you can one-off or explain things away. Um, and I think there was probably too much of that, not just from Democrats, but from Republicans and from the media. Um, and so data certainly always needs to get tuned and, and upgraded and updated. And, um, and I do think there is work that needs to be done to meet polling with analytics, with modeling, and have that data speak to itself a, a little more um, uh, you know, strategically. But the data itself, I don't think, was the problem. Now, in 16 years of doing this, I don't think I've seen the public criticism of the committee on the Democratic side. The NRCC went through uh, some infighting when they were losing elections and kind of going through into the wilderness. And so you know, we're talking about a handful of members who have been pretty vocal in their critique of how the committee handled it. Um, but one of the main points of contention is kind of, a, I think we call it the 50 state strategy. We need to compete everywhere. I mean, that's the mantra. But walk, walk through what's the tangible impact of a committee broadening the playing field mm -hmm. and, and focusing on districts that are long shots, if not worse. What, what's the tangible impact if a committee starts to focus on those races as well as the, the natural toss-ups? Sure. 
Well, there, the, I always call it the arc of the campaign, right? The, the cycle goes through an arc, and one of the first steps on that arc is candidate recruitment. And it is right to recruit deep. It is absolutely the right strategy to, and we did this and have done this, uh, you know, in every cycle, at least since I've been paying attention to the DCCC, you gotta recruit deep, and you gotta find candidates in as many districts as you possibly can. And I think the DCCC is doing that again this cycle with the list of 59 potentially targeted races that. Um, um, that they released a few weeks ago, you have to get as many candidates on the playing field as possible. It's the right thing to do if you're in a wave environment in your favor. It's the right thing to do if you're in a wave environment against you. Um, you know, talking to people and giving them the opportunity to potentially run for Congress and have that conversation with voters is important in every piece of the country every time. So recruiting deep is the right strategy. And then you have to you know, see how the campaign plays out to know which of those candidates are legitimate, which ones you know, maybe fell by the wayside you know, for whatever reason, which districts are competitive that particular cycle, which ones aren't. Those are the iterations that happen throughout the arc of the cycle. But recruiting deep and having as many candidates on the board as possible is always the right strategy.